Hey guys, Todd Sachs of Sachs Realty. I'm the broker and founder here. And uh, if you are watching us live right now, I am sitting here with Scott Betley and we're going to learn all about TikTok. Um, Scott is with um, you know First Home Mortgage. So we're in the same industry and um, you know, real good guy local here in Maryland. And um, he's just like this phenomenon. He's famous. And, and I'll tell you how he's famous because you know, TikTok is this hot platform right now. And so one of my, my youngest daughter was visiting a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about the TikTok platform and Scott came up and she's like that mortgage guy. She's like, wait, like, you know him? I was like, well, yeah, I know him. He's here in Maryland. And she goes on and she's like, oh, wow, he really is in Maryland. She's like, I see him all the time. I watch his videos. So, you know, and, um, and she's living in Tennessee. So, man, you, Scott, you've gone all the way to Tennessee. You've gone everywhere, man, beyond Tennessee. But um, so I'm sitting here with Melissa Levy, and uh, we're just really excited. We thank you so much for spending time with us and, and sharing, uh, you know, all the good stuff you've been working on. So, Scott, just take a minute and talk about you. You know, let everybody know what you do and, and um, you know, fill in some gaps. Yeah, so I've uh, I've been in the lending world now for almost ten years, going on about eight and a half years. And uh, marketing and advertising is really my forte, just with social media. And I've kind of become obsessed over it in recent recent years. And uh, about five six months ago, I made the plunge into TikTok and really started to figure out the platform. I'm a big follower of Gary V, and I listen to his podcast daily. And he had mentioned on there, you know, you got to check out this platform. The organic reach is even more than what Instagram and Facebook were in their heyday. And, you know, I, I tried it out and we'll get a little bit further along and discuss how that like came to fruition. And when I really realized that it was, it was legitimate, but um, yeah, I'm in the lending world. I have a family. We live up in Harford County. My wife actually, we're due in four weeks to have our second boy. So we're excited. Oh, congratulations. What's going on, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a crazy time to be having a kid. But um, yeah, it's a little bit about me and, and what's been happening in my world. So how old are you, Scott? Because what I think of TikTok, I think of it as a younger platform, but you just said you've been in the mortgage industry for 10 years. Yes, yeah, so I'm 29 years old. Um, my, my dad has been in the business for about 35 years, so I got into it fairly young, was around it and involved with it. Originally, I was in um, the fitness industry and was running a, a Gold's Gym as sales manager. And my dad was like, well, you're doing all these different marketing platforms and campaigns and things like that. Why don't you try it with mortgages? And um, that was kind of how I got into it and tested the waters and I loved it. So, Well, you know, you mentioned Gary V. I I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. I mean, you know, who isn't? I remember Gary V. back in the wine library days and uh, happened to really enjoy, you know, uh, wine and i remember you know he would have this you know little show and uh you know basically taste wines and you know spit into this you know jar and it was kind of really raw and and it's amazing what he's done and you know i'm 52 and not really you know um native to this social media stuff i mean we do it uh, i like to think i'm a little bit um more savvy for my age than most, um, but Facebook, Instagram, obviously, you know, um, Twitter, things like that. I mean, I have some platforms that do better than others, but TikTok, when it came on, it's like, you know, um, I heard it was just this young crowd. And now, you know, I see people my age on it and everybody's watching it or, you know, sharing it and all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, explain TikTok. Yeah, so it's um, it's a platform that's really video centric. It's all videos, and uh, it's just a lot of trends and trending songs and taking advantage of these different trends that are going on within the platform. Um, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, it took me some time to to figure it out because it it was quite confusing. But what's really been great about it, and what I've seen over the last five months, is it's aging up so fast, so much faster than Facebook and Instagram. Um, just in terms of, you know, the history of those platforms and how, you know, Facebook started with a college crowd and over the span of five to seven years, it started to go up into the older generations. And now it's, 
you know, there's our grandmothers on, on there and all, all different types of generations. And what's crazy about TikTok is I think close to 35 or 40% of the demographics now on the app are between the age of 21 and 32 or 33. So um, they're, they're a lot of first time home buyers, some are move up buyers, but uh, it's just aging up so fast. And I got really lucky. I mean, I was one of the first mortgage guys that were on there putting out content. And uh, yeah, I, I have to say thanks to Gary Vee because I would not be where I am or doing this had, not, had I not heard it on his podcast and it's just been unreal. I mean, I'm, the outreach that, and leads that I'm getting on a daily basis is close to 80 to 100 emails a day. So it's, it's insane. What has the feedback been? What, has, what does your wife say about you taking time and making these videos? She, uh, she's now starting to realize that it's well worth it. And uh, it's also one of those things where like, uh, influencers on the platform can really monetize themselves where I'm almost at a hundred K I should be hopefully at a hundred K in the next week, but I'm gaining a thousand to 2000 followers a day. And because I'm so niche within the finance industry, if I can scale that following to over a million, um, you know, I could, I could do ads for 10 to $15,000 a post and, you know, be able to still take advantage of the leads and be able to promote myself, but also be able to do advertising. And uh, because I am so niche within the finance industry, you know, real estate agencies, insurance agencies, investment firms, attorneys, um, you know, the people that follow me are the older demographics that are a little bit more serious about finances and wealth. And so um, I'm looking forward to that because that's kind of my end goal with it and hopefully scaling it to a level where I can do that as well. But it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm lucky that I like it too because it's, I'm just having too much fun on there. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was going to ask is what was your end goal? I mean, obviously, you know, if, if you can, uh, you know, sell ads and, and uh, you know, be an influencer under those different levels and things like that, but that's a massive amount of following. You know, how much time do you spend in this daily? So I would say probably about three to four hours a day on TikTok. Wow. Yeah. And at nighttime, um, so what I recommend everyone does, if you're not familiar with the app and the trends and the platform as a whole, download it, spend three to four hours going through the for you page, which is essentially like if you're on Instagram, they have that search button where it's a massive, you know, search of anyone who's ever posted anything where you can search any sort of hashtag and it pulls up anyone or everyone's content. Um, the for you page is fairly similar to that where it's viral trends and viral videos that have essentially popped off on the platform. And if you sit there and you spend some time just scrolling through that for you page and consuming the content, it's a matter of time before you start to figure out these nuances and there's skits and different trends and things that are happening. And if you can really play on the sounds that are popular within the platform, that's really how you can catch steam very quickly. You have no following and could have three to 500,000 views on a video overnight. Um, and it's just a matter of playing on those trends and those trending songs, because when you create a video, your video goes into that trending song with uh, thousands of other videos that other content creators have created to that sound. And you know, there's people that will click it and just scroll through, and because it's trending, it gets pushed out there even more. So- um, You've learned so much. When was your first post? So my first post was probably late last year sometime. And um, I want to say late December, early January, it was like my 30th post, my 30th video. Um, I, I got like three or 400,000 views on it in like three or four days. And I was like, wow, this is, this is real. And I started to figure out the different nuances of what the Gen Z's and my audience was wanting to hear about just as far as like home buying hacks. Cause these kids are big on like life hacks and hacks and the American dream is buying a house. So why not play on different aspects of that and tips and tricks and hacks. And that's essentially what I've kind of focused on. And there's certain videos where I, I go a little bit more in depth where I'm literally just holding my phone, talking into the camera. And what I love about the platform is it's really raw. Like I do a lot of post-produced videos for um, Instagram and Facebook where I've done music videos and other videos that have performed really well. But uh, what's funny is they don't perform as well on that app because it's more of a raw platform where people are doing a lot of videos from their phone. And when you have a fancy 
style video like that, for whatever reason, for me, it doesn't perform as well. So um, it's been nice to know that though, because it's easier to, to produce the content that's raw just from your phone. All my TikTok videos are shot within the app on my phone. So it makes it very easy. So okay. what's the app? So the app is TikTok, the actual app. And what I do is I normally spend like an hour to two hours a night when my wife falls asleep in bed, just scrolling through the For You page, consuming content and consuming trends. And when I come across a video that I'm interested in replicating or, you know, spinning it this way or talking about this, you know, um, I'll text that video to myself from the platform and, you know, include a little caption in my text to myself of how I want to spin it or what I want to talk about. And I've got like a log of probably 200 videos that I, I can produce at any moment just to pull from like a, a library and I just keep building it every day. Um, so... So you're doing everything 100% yourself. You have no help, no production, no post-production crew, nothing. You everything that we see you're doing yourself. That's it. Yep. Yeah. And you're so clever. Like your little the way you tie in the music with your little Got I mean, you're just really going, good. Man. Thank you. Yeah. It's pain and the pop-ups and the this and the that and I mean it's look, I I have to be honest with you, man. I mean, look I, you know, I follow you on Instagram. I follow you on Facebook. I don't have a TikTok yet, but I have a feeling that after today I will. Um, you know, I mean, my wife and I, we were just sitting there, you know, the other night and we're just looking through it. I mean, it is very entertaining. I mean, you're, you're teaching in a way it's very entertaining. Let's talk about the leads. You say you're getting a hundred emails or thereabouts a day. Yes. Yeah. It's close to 80 to a hundred a day. And what's crazy is it's just, increasing probably about two, three months ago was 40 to 50 a day. And I've now doubled my following and the outreach just continues to increase. So what's um, the process? I mean, what's the cycle at that point? Are they reaching out just saying, Hey, like I want to buy a house or what's the, what are the, what are they saying? That's exactly what they're saying. Hey Scott, I saw you on TikTok. Uh, it's the craziest thing. I never thought I would be hitting up a mortgage banker through TikTok, but I want to buy a house. How do I go about doing this? Right now, I'm just licensed in Maryland. I'm getting my Florida license, Pennsylvania, um, Virginia, and DC. So I'm in the process of pinning down a couple other states. And I'm getting probably about four to five buyers a week in Maryland right now that are seeing me on TikTok and reaching out. I have um, close to 14 buyers that are pre-approved. I've got one under contract, and I've got two or three contracts that are pending um, from TikTok. So what do you what are they saying at work? I mean, are, are they, you know, do you have like a line of uh, loan officers that are saying, you know, teach me, teach me, teach me, or what, I mean, what's, are you kind of like the lone ranger? You're just like, you know, I don't have time for it. I mean, what's, what, what they've got to be hitting you up too. Honestly, they're not. People are, I don't know if people are scared of it or just it's out of their comfort zone or whatever, but um yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I, I've tried to preach to a lot of my coworkers and fellow loan officers at our branch, you know, that you got to check this out. You got to take a look at it because um, some of them are licensed in other states that I'm not yet licensed in where I'm handing these leads off to them as well. And um, they're just like, this is from TikTok. And, and they don't even know what the platform is, but it's, uh, to be honest, I, I wouldn't even be familiar with it if it wasn't for Gary V and like the conference zone thing. Like, I was the kid at high school that was standing in the corner at high school dances because I was too afraid to dance or like <laughs> let my hair down like that because I felt like I looked weird. And now it's come full circle where, you know, I, I consume very- It's kind of hard to believe, I got to tell you that. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to buy, you know, I've, I have no reason not to believe you, man, but you are so freaking good at this and such a natural that it's like, man, so then that's proof that anybody can do it. If that's true, I mean, if you were really shy and- you know, the confidence wasn't there and you can go and do this kind of thing. I mean, because you're, you're crushing it. And um, I mean, really uh, you're a genius uh, and, and what you're doing. Absolutely. What about hate? So, you know, I, you know, we, we, we hate to use that. Um, it's funny because we were just talking, you know, I had a, a conversation with some people the other day and we were talking about, you know, like, I guess the millennials was really sort of like the first um, in 
embracing you know the no bullying kind of thing you know like no cyber bullying like that was the big thing and being kind to people online and you know and that sort of worked for a while and now we see where you know you're starting to see the, these comments take life a life of their own and you know and now with you know it just seems like so many people were posting so much angry stuff and you know from what i hear on TikTok, there is a lot of that. Do you find that? There is a lot of that. Yeah. And um, to be honest, it's it's something that you just have to take with a grain of salt. It's going to be everywhere you go. And you've got these keyboard warriors that want to drop, drop comments and say certain things. But at the end of the day, you know, like I, I believe wholeheartedly in what Gary Vee says, as far as like having empathy for these people, because if they're in a place where they're putting you down, when you're, when you're, at least for me, like, doing well on the platform and I'm getting leads and, you know, it's helping my business. Like, I feel bad for them. Like they really must be in a bad spot. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a lot of that. There's been a few, I actually got called out by this doctor that has almost a half million followers. Cause I did a trend um, where I like redid this trend, but it was about my buyer and she had did it about her patient. And um, she like reposted my video and called me out and I had all of these people like attacking me. Um, they went to my Instagram and were commenting on pictures of my son and were like, oh, I bet you stole him too. Like, and like vulgar, like curse word comments. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, um, but it, you know, it's, it died down. Like it was just a day or two and it, it's, it's part of, you know, growth and people just trying to take your legs out from under you. But um, you know, you just got to take it with a grain of salt. Did it bother you? It did at first because I got, I got a little bit nervous because I was like, I mean, I, I redo trends here and there, but a lot of my content is original content as well. But the platform as a whole is about trends and like replicating trends with what you do or your lifestyle or what you want to talk about or your craft or business. Um, but, uh, yeah, at first I was real shook up about it. My wife was like, you know, this is going to blow over. Like, you don't have to. I was just all worked up about it. But it, uh, you know, I've worked really hard on it. So I, I didn't uh, I didn't want it to look bad on me. And I was just doing what I always do with replicating trends. So um, it's hard to not take that personally, especially when, you know, they're making, they say things about your family and stuff. I would think that that would be very difficult it was yeah it it was uh but it was a learning experience too because i'm sure i'm sure it'll happen again but uh it is what it is you know would you recommend for everyone to now make the merge go over to TikTok? would you say that that's where you see this evolving in the life of social media yeah i would highly recommend it i think that in the next two to three years TikTok is going to be a big rival to instagram and facebook and part of the reason that that is, is I'm seeing so much content on Facebook and Instagram that's coming from TikTok, where like TikTok has the ability to share across platforms where they're not like a confined platform. Instagram and Facebook are kind of integrated together because they're owned by Facebook. But like a lot of these other companies like Twitter, like when you upload a tweet, there's not a share. I don't know if there is, but I don't think there's a share to Facebook or share to Instagram button. Um, so it's kind of like confined as far as what, how these other platforms are working. And a lot of the content I'm seeing on TikTok, you can share it directly to Instagram or to Facebook. And it's more of like a, I don't know, it's just a different kind of platform. It, it's kind of cool to see. So what was the, and you know, just to, well, just back up for a second, you know, you talk about, you know, working on things that are trending and things like that. You know, there's an old saying, good artists borrow, great artists steal. I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to invent something, you know, it's like, because you, somebody's done it. So, you know, I, it's interesting when you say that, you know, I mean, I, I believe, I mean, the original content, no one's you, you can't, you know, um, and you don't want to be somebody because, you know, the, the, um, being your authentic you is really what wins out in the end. But as far as trending and things like that, um, that would help somebody like me because I, I would have to do that start at least starting out. Um, what, a, what one video was like it, like, did I hear you say um, to somebody that one of your videos um, 
and I don't know, maybe it was Todd Collins. Shout out to Todd Collins. Um, but was there, um, did you in an interview with him say that one of your videos was like at 900,000 views? It's at, it's almost at 2 million right now. 2 million. Yeah. Yeah. It's at like 1.9 and some change, but, uh, yeah, the, the very first video that popped off was like my 30th video. It was just, uh, it was about like a down payment assistance program and buying a house with no money down and like a home buying hack. And I was just pointing to like text bubbles on B and I just had my phone and I was just pointing to text bubbles. And I think that one had, I think it's up to like five or 600,000 views, but that was one of my very first ones where I was getting a hundred to 200 views a video. You know, I wasn't getting much of anything. And then I had that, I think that took me up to like five or 6,000 followers. And I was like, wow, this is, this is legit. I just tripled my Instagram following over, overnight. So you're seeing and, that. So oh, you're yeah. seeing that they're, they're going, seeing you on TikTok and checking you out everywhere else. And now you're seeing that those platforms are going up too. Well, yeah. What I was saying was as far as the TikTok following, just from the one video, like it went, I think it was five or 6,000 followers overnight. And on Instagram at the time I had 1100 followers or a thousand followers. And over the last three months, now I'm up over 2,500 followers. I'm gaining like 20 to 40 followers a day that are trickling over from TikTok because you can embed your Instagram profile into your TikTok profile where there's a little symbol, they can click that and it takes them right to your IG profile. So are you like addicted to your phone? It's tough. Yeah. I, uh, I try to try to put it down from time to time and have like space during dinner time. And, you know, with a young kid and another baby on the way, it, uh, I definitely have to set up those just times where I have to put it down because it's, it's addicting. Like you said, so are you being spotted out? I mean, do people look at you and say, Hey man, I know you, you're that mortgage guy. I mean, is that happening? Yeah, it's happened to me probably like five or six times in the last few months. Uh, my wife and I were at Looney's and somebody walked up to us and did a video. It's actually on TikTok um, that you're, you're that mortgage guy. And then um, I was in Canton. I had to, did a video um, to Bad Guy from Billie Eilish where I rewrote the song and did like a music video to it. But it got shared in like the Canton Crossing group on Facebook and a couple other local groups. And I'm always down there in that, that area because my, my office is right outside the Canton Square. But I was just walking in the Canton Square to the um, to Master's Title where that old, the old Keller Williams building was. And this lady was coming at M&T. And I was literally doing a story. And she was like, you're that mortgage guy. And I, I couldn't make it up. Like, luckily, I had my phone like open and was just doing a story on Instagram. I'm like, this is crazy. But um, It is crazy. That's what you get for being TikTok famous. It's so funny. My wife loves it. I'll tell you, she is just. <laughs> oh, I see her in some of the videos, and you're, you know, like catching her, and she's like just going about her business, like whatever. He's got, you know, <laughs> not even really paying attention to it. Um, so, uh, talk about uh, male, female. Like, what's your audience balance? Um, That's a good question. Let me pull up my demographics. The last time I checked, it was primarily female, which I'm okay with. You know, a lot of females make the decisions in the household. So that is uh, totally fine with me. Let me see here. Yeah, 79.1% female, 20% male, um, and 91% of my following is in the United States. So I've got 4% in the United Kingdom, 2% in Canada. Um, you know, well, I mean, if you're getting 100, you know, emails a day, I mean, it's tick. I mean, the, the thing is, that's amazing. It started out as this very young platform. And and then because I, I remember, you know, I'd said to my daughter, you know, do I is, is this a space I should be in? And she's like, no, they're too young. You know, they're basically, you know, um, high school or, you know, younger kids. But now all of a sudden it's like amazing, you know, how fast that's changing. And with you jumping on so early, um, you know, and really getting that notoriety. I mean, it's, it's just, I can only imagine the effect that it's going to have moving forward. Well, Scott, give us the, give us the five minute watered down version, start to finish. You know, what do I do? You know, I, I'm not on TikTok, you know, kind of just can you give me some kind of a, you know, the audience a little bit of something you had mentioned, download the app, go through it but really maybe just a little bit deeper, dive a little deeper. 
Yeah, so five minute tutorial on what you should do. I would say, like you said, download the app, spend a three, four hours going through the For You page and consuming the content and those trends and what's trending as far as songs are concerned. And then from there, you know, I catalog that stuff by text, texting it to myself so I can remember which trends and different songs and videos that I want to reenact or take in this direction or do this or that and, you know, create a little bit of a text to myself with a caption to go along with the video I text myself, you know, just breaking down what I want to do so I don't forget it when I go back to it. And then this is the video. Um, and if you go right here, this little sound bar right here that's spinning in the bottom where the music symbols are coming off, you can click that and then um, you can hit use this sound. And then when you hit use the sound, it pulls that sound into your video. So if I was to hit record right now, it would immediately start pay playing that soundtrack. I don't ever just use it or record it from this screen. Um, the biggest tool I've seen that I use the most in this, this uh, app is this timer tool that they have right here. And then it pulls up this timer bar at the bottom where you can set your phone down and hit countdown. It'll count down from three seconds or 10 seconds. And then there's a stop bar where you can, like if you're doing a skit, you can drag that over, you hit countdown, it goes three, two, one, and then it records that first segment and you could have your phone set up. You could be, you know, mouthing the words to it or pointing to the text bubbles or doing a skit, like you're talking to yourself and acting like I'm the lender and talking to my buyer. And it normally, you know, I'll do two or three takes sometimes, sometimes I'll get it on the first try. But um, that's what I use to really create my content and try to select which trends I want to do. And I really use the For You page to figure out what's really hot and performing the best right now as far as sounds and trends and skits. Um, so I implore you to use that because that is a really good tool just to know what is performing well. And then is there a... Um when you're posting that, is there anything that gets done? I mean, can you pay to boost or is that, I mean, what, is it all organic? It's all organic. Yeah. I, I think they're like playing with some advertising now where like if I open the app, there's an ad that will pop up, but I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how to get access to that or what that is exactly. But yeah. For me, it's all organic. So if they react to that post that you've made, so your followers, any kind of idea on what percentage of those followers will see what you post? So if you have 900,000 or, or 97,000, whatever uh, followers, when you post, do they all see that right now? No. And what's really kind of crazy is the majority of my content that like I'm posting is getting across new people because... Um, what happens is, is the algorithm on the app, there's, there's different breakdowns where in the first 10 to 15 minutes, the platform will push your video out to a certain database of people. And depending upon how it performs with that data set, as far as comments and views and likes, if it performs well or above a certain percentage, it will get pushed out to the next level. And then it's tested at that level. And then it goes further and further and further. And, um, like I always will watch it because there's some videos where I'll post it, you know, I'll get two or 3000 views within an hour. And I'll, I normally will know that will probably be like a 20 to 30,000 view video in the next week or so. And then there's videos that I'll post that will pop off really quickly. And in an hour, they'll have 15 to 20,000 views. Um, so it, it just depends on how good the content is and, you know, so do you ever post anything and that first hour you don't like what is happening and then you take it down? I've done that a couple of times. Um, majority of the time I'll just leave it up. Um, I've, lately I've become pretty thoughtful about my content and just what I'm putting out there. So there was a time a little, probably like two, three months ago where I was a little bit more insecure and was testing the waters with different things and some were flopping and now I kind of know just the nuances and different verbiage that you've got to put in there where like the home buying hacks and these different words and captions that these kids are using on their videos, you know, like from something about a grant program and having the caption as it, it do be like that though. <laughs> and that's literally what 
what these kids put in there. And, and uh, it's crazy, like, how if you use the verbiage, it kind of it helps even more because you could – I've done things where I've posted the same exact video and just changed the verbiage and the captions in the video as well as the caption of the video, and it's gotten – 20 to 40,000 more views just because it has better verbiage. So you can go back and modify it. You can modify it. Once you post it, it's set. So what you could do is you could, you could download it from TikTok and then just put new text bubbles over the bubbles you already put up and do it that way. But honestly, I don't, I haven't been doing that much lately. I, I've been so busy that I normally just post it and let it go because it's been a lot, but yeah, I just had a question. Can you search by you saying you would put in certain catchphrases in? Is that an ability to search for things on TikTok or do you, do you normally just go by the user? Yeah, so you can search. It's very similar to Instagram as far as hashtags and hashtags are more beneficial on this platform. So if you have like a trending song that has like a, a chorus that is, you know, really familiar, or it says the same words over and over. If you hashtag it, and type that in, there's probably hundreds of thousands of videos that have hashtagged that video or that, that sound where it's that, you know, the verbiage from the chorus or, you know, that trend or whatever the song is or whatever you're doing. Um, but the, the hashtags are really beneficial on that platform where, um, you know, you get put into those data sets and it really does help. Much more. I'm going to dive in. I mean, clearly this is paying off for you. It's just, you're doing it for such a short period of time for being on there and the success you're having. It's, I'm glad we're doing this podcast. This is so much fun. I guarantee. I mean, I, you know, I've look, I've talked to a couple of people. I'm not even going to, you know, pretend and, 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 uh, you know, other loan officers and they're like, eh, this, that mortgage guy, man, is Scott Bentley. I mean, I don't know how he has so much time doing this and, you know, it can't pay off or it can't be whatever, whatever, man, you just blew that away. So I'm sure they're, you know, hopefully, I mean, this is going to help a lot of people. I know it's going to help me, Scott. I tell you, um, we're going to publish everything about Scott in our show notes. Um, if you're looking for a mortgage, you know, reach out to this guy. Um, and, um, you know, Scott, thank you so much, man, for your time. Thank and, you. uh, and, and, and we're going to be watching you and look, we got you now before you, you know, but us little guys, you know, we won't be able to, you know, hopefully that won't happen. Right. I mean, you're going to still come to our events and, you know, hang out at me. You might have to have like, you know, a crew around you or whatever, but <laughs> that's cool, man. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Scott. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Todd. Thank you. Sax Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.